so far we've covered everything from the practical smaller creative apartment bedroom styles styles type home studio setup all the way to the holy cow is this really a home studio in the backyard kind of thing with uh with the whole tracking room booth control room amazing like we all want this thing and everything in between which is really really cool and hopefully brings some inspiration and some ideas to you as it has for me uh, personally because i'm so sort of somewhere in the middle you know this is just like the den in my house but it is a very, it's nice now i will say in this video we go to um, my friend ben fields home studio which is on this side of the equation it is very much outstanding backyard home studio setup and it is a really compelling place to just be inside of and and thank you ben for inviting me and letting me check out your spot and show show you guys it i think you guys are really gonna like it so the name of the studio is the carriage works or carriage works records i'll put all of the links to their website and social media down below that like button if you guys want to check it out which brings me to today's sponsor me andrewmastersmusic.com if you guys didn't know i have this cool website where you can like book me for stuff there's like drums and mixing and all that stuff but i'm gonna focus on one part which has allowed me to directly connect with you which has been super fun and I, you guys are awesome so thank you thank you for doing that it supports the channel it helps me tremendously and it's just so fun to do so if you, what you can do you can go to andrewmastersmusic.com you can hit the book now button and it takes you to this services page so you go to the consulting tab and you can actually pick a time and then we just schedule a call like this over zoom so you basically are here just like you are now watching me on the video but you can talk to me just like this maybe you get some gear for christmas or you're building a studio um, or maybe you just want to have some coffee and hang out i'm down for honestly whatever it's it's been a lot of fun so thank you guys so much it's andrewmastersmusic.com for sponsoring this video if you don't want to do that you can always support the channel by simply smashing the like button for the youtube algorithm hitting the red subscribe button so you can see the new videos that are coming out every monday there's a new studio tour and every other thursday is the new series called epic studio gear which you can see episode one for that right here and uh this episode two is coming out this thursday i don't know when you're watching this this is probably already out by now but episode two is going to be really cool so check that out make sure you're subscribed so you can see when that comes out all right let's go check out the carriage work studio in east nashville ben yeah and vic yeah thank you for having me yeah, and um when did you build this and what was sort of that process like i started doing it in 2019 i think and the process was confusing and long and hard yeah and brutal uh i knew nothing about what I was doing when I started. Um, I had done some basic construction, but I had never done anything on this scale. Yeah, it was just unbelievably difficult yeah. for like start to finish. But I guess when you're working with something like, like this kind of project where you're not, you know, you're not doing it for anybody else, you're doing it for yourself, you know exactly what you want to get out of the end. Yeah. It was also just one of the most fundamentally rewarding things I've ever done. So it was great. So there's like a little teeny bathroom where, oh wow nice and a kitchen and oh. when i say bathroom like it's it's like an airplane bathroom it's yeah tiny because yeah. i'm from brooklyn and the idea was to like utilize every square foot and take out as much junk yeah. as we could take out yeah and really use the space so there's a bathroom there's a kitchen uh there's the control room a drum booth or like a dead booth um vocal booth and a live room so it's only it's 968 square feet it's not a huge building but every inch is accounted for there's yeah you're standing underneath the storage area though. So there's tons of storage above you um, where like all of the guitar cases and broken outboard gear and stuff like that tends to live. There's another storage space above the vocal booth where all of our HVAC baffle boxes live. Uh, there's an HVAC system above uh, these booths as well. So like it was really because there were so many dimensional challenges, mm -hmm. it was, the idea was to like just really go balls to the wall on making sure that every bit of space was serving a function, which is the kind of like 
you know, when you live in Brooklyn, you have to because you're living in such small spaces. Sure, yeah. So that was that was the idea here. How much of this did you do on your own? Did you hire people or? I hired, uh, uh, yeah, there were two guys that framed the place for me. So I didn't know much about framing. I had done like a very, very basic amount of like framing construction. My knowledge was kind of more in the, the you know, how to run a studio part. And also I knew how to wire electrical and do plumbing okay. and stuff like that. So I had two guys come in and do uh, the, the framing and they framed like room within a room. And then the rest of it was on me until I got everything checked out by pros to make sure that I had made it so people could electrocute themselves. Or... So control room, we have a 1974 MCI JH528, uh, which Vic and I, uh, well, Vic restored and told me what to do. <laughs> on each of these channel strip, there's like uh, over a thousand individual components so we had to completely gut this console oh my to make gosh. it work again uh, it was it was not working at all we got it where did you get it uh, it came from a guy in san francisco before that it was in la with lamont dozier and before that it was at sound 80 in minneapolis where it, it cut the first prince record and oh blood on the tracks uh, the Dylan wow. record, the, the Minneapolis session. So it's got a kind of cool history to it. But it was really, it was beat up when we got it. So we had to do a lot. But thankfully, Victor understands this stuff and he just told me what to do. And we sat here drinking coffee until 4 a.m. Pulling <laughs> <laughs> the passengers <laughs> off and trying to get it to work. Yeah, the pre's sound great. Which, which, there was, there's an Elton John record. I think it was like, it was, what was it, Yellow Brick Road or something like that. Yeah. He did like a few of his and I think that was the main. so that's like the sound of those pre's is that that record wow um, they, they're way cooler than than people kind of give them credit for um, yeah. and I personally when I found this one I had looked at 428s and 600s and all these different series of the MCI consoles and this is the one that I wanted there's something particularly great about the 500 they just sound they sound different um, so we use the board pre's a lot and then we've got some external pre's um, Got a couple of Aurora 1073 knockoffs. One that was built by a local guy uh, up the top there. But yeah, most of the time we're just using board trees. I see monitors here, so I know there's a computer. Yeah. But you also have a, wait. The radar, that's a computer. No, we're, I, we're old school. So this is, I'll, this is the session controller. So because like the studio was designed around the idea of like kind of running, you know, analog tape yeah. type of thing. Um, this is how we run our sessions. Oh like, my goodness. Arming tracks, disarming tracks, you know, all of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's actually a really cool little system and it's got its own thing, like its own system to record, which we don't really use. We tend to use Pro Tools. Um, yeah. But it works great. The converters sound fantastic. Um, and we have this little session controller that we can actually just kind of do our thing with. Um, Whoa. I've never seen anything like that before. It's it's a really cool computer. This is a computer, but it's also the interface yeah. converters. Yeah. So Whoa. it's got like on the back of it, it's got DB25s. I guess that's probably the easiest way to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Like it looks like a like one of those weirdo gamer PCs or something <laughs> oh, like yeah. that. But then it's got DB25s over here and all the cards are just right in there. Um, goes out into the catch base and you're Whoa. Kind of a way. Um, but people really love these ones for their, <coughs> uh, the sound of the converters. They're a 96K converter. They're not, they make a 192, but I actually specifically wanted the 96 because they sound more just natural to me uh, cool. than the 192s. They, the 192 sounded, I don't know, just slightly more clinical. But again, when you're getting sure. into like that level of minutia, it's like, yeah. does it really sound different or am I just faking myself out right i just like the way that one sounded so how many inputs do you guys have uh 24 and 24 on the tape machine so we got 28 on the console so we can do 24 channel sessions and then have another four for whatever else we need to run we have 95 inputs because the house has 16 okay as well um and then there's like panels on in every room there's four in here uh so we can track like guitar or whatever in the control room or we can track on. Oh, so, okay. So like tie lines. Tie lines, yeah. Tie lines. Okay, got it, yeah. okay, got it. Yeah. Well, these, these that I described earlier, <laughs> the producer's knobs, those are really important. So tell, tell me about that. What, what's, yeah, well, uh, 
What's the producer now? Because I, I got a lot of producers who watch this. Who yeah, I don't think these. I, like I don't want to give away a trade secret or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but these are for, and in fairness, we haven't actually had to use them yet. But if someone was being a real pain in the ass about something, these are just here. They're not. They're actually RGB knobs from TV, but they're there to just like so that we could adjust something to make somebody not be a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> so that's why they're there. Like that's yeah, that's man. Sound, right? That's a good idea. So those are the them, and then you already saw the computer, all of our patch bays that are kind of like, I don't know, uh, this is more like a big thing, but like I feel like we set the patch bays up in like the dumbest way you could, because I'm not very good at this stuff, and I really, I spent months trying to figure out even what a patch bay did. Yeah. It was like giving like, like a chimpanzee a click pen or something, like I was like, I don't know, like how does this do its thing again, what? It's, it's actually pretty straightforward, you have like, all your tie line, the whole top bay is all your tie lines from around the studio and in the house. And then uh, here's your tape machine returns and your Pro Tools, or your, your preamps mm -hmm. for the console. And then this, down here we have all the sends. Um, there's six sends that you can get mm -hmm. um, with that console. Um, yeah, and then you have your, con your radar in and out, and then all the outboard gears on the bottom. Nice, and those are all 96 point Patch base. Do you know yeah, who makes those? Those are AVP. AVP. Um, yeah, from like a, a standpoint of like how someone gets from, you know, not having a lot of stuff to work with to like being able to do something like this. Like those, those were one of those scores that I made. Nice. From a university in Toronto. I had uh, literally had to fly to Toronto to grab them. Yeah, uh, definitely worth it. Patch bays are not cheap. They're really expensive, and, and I was like... So lame to buy. I know. It felt like the worst way to spend money. And um, <laughs> Yeah, there's the Hothouse amp, which um, is ridiculous. It's a great sounding amplifier. There's a guy named Richard Rose in upstate New York who makes these, and they're just phenomenal. They're really, really, really nice amps. They're not something that you see in very many studios, but a buddy of mine had one and showed it to me, and he turned on his NS10s, and I was like, where, where, where are we monitoring right now? Like, <laughs> he's like, we're gonna listen off the NS10s. Holy smokes. So they're, they're really cool. So does that power amp just do the NS10s? Uh, and then... <clears throat> we don't really use the NS10s. Oh, okay, so it's just tracks. Yeah. And they, then you swap them if somebody wants to use the NS10s. Yeah, they're... Or you say no. They're really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where we said. So I just wanna get... <laughs> <laughs> I love NS10. Do you really? I do. So you guys are just using the Pro X to the hot house? Yeah, primarily. There's a couple of V610s, Spectrosonics comp limiters, uh -huh. um, which you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with, especially if uh, and if you look them up, like if you check these out, like the way they do transient reduction, like they're just really amazing at what they do. And then you can use them as mic pre's, you can use them as whatever two dbx 161s and then an over easy 165 nice yeah there's a Furman eq that was like another one of those bits that i just kind of saw i thought i wonder what that sounds like mm -hmm. um, i think it's a pre as well right <laughs> yeah. yeah and it sounds like um like lightning has struck the building or something it's really bad um, <laughs> it's terrible it's like uh, the worst sounding mic we've ever it's heard a great review the gtq2 which is awesome those are a great little Two channel uh, thing. A couple of hairball 1176s. This guy's kind of neat. This is a stereo tap delay that does like this, these wild, you can like change the delay left and right and all these crazy things. And then a tuner. And then these are a pair of um, Altec that have been mounted into EMI RS124s by um, I don't know, some dude. They, they were at like one of those big studios and I got them off this guy. Uh, I think they're under Altec, they're the they're very close to the 432 or 436A. 436 does, yeah, B or B, C, yeah. Okay. Um, but they were, but yeah, yeah, almost the same. Those two circuits are like, like the 124 circuit and that and the Altec circuit are really, really, really close. What do you guys like to use those on? Everything. Oh, cool. Those are, those are like, if you listen, if you listen to Beatles records, yeah. everybody thinks that it's all Fairchild 660s. It's, yeah. it, they use the RS-124s equally as as much yeah. according to what i've read yeah. uh, and those like one of the rs124s if you have like a d19 above a drum kit or even yeah. like you can just use any dynamic mic above a drum kit and one of those is that crushy ringo-y yeah. sound they're awesome and i love them they probably get used 
like when I do my own stuff in here, that's what I what I like going to. They're not surgical at all. Got it. They're dope yeah. compressors. Right. For idiots, and I love the way they sound. <laughs> dope um, compressors for, for idiots. Piano. Then over here, there's like this guy, the magnet sink. There's um this thing, which is kind of neat. This is a uh, a Telefunken Echo mixer. Whoa. It's with the um, if you've like gotten was it Portishead was that saying? Yeah. Yeah, Portishead like all their reverbs were. Um, apparently, they used a bunch of these. It's got like little wet dry switches on them. Yeah. They've got preamps, but they're they're really cool. If you can find one, they're rare. There's a pendulum. There's this harmonic computer that uh, does all weird stuff. A Lexicon PCM70 that we use mainly for headphones. Um, and then a couple of warm audios, a couple of Diesengolf 864s, um, a Dane Audio DSer, which is another one of those ones that nobody knows about. Um, that's like... Killer. Yeah, it's great on acoustic guitar. It's great on vocals. Yeah. They're really cool. And it's what's strange. that crazy thing in the bottom there? Is that like that, a synth? No, that, so that's Victor's next project. Do you, <laughs> do you, I don't remember what, what um, it is. They're just a bunch of, uh, it, they came out of some lab from uh, UCLA. Just a bunch of EQs basically and a couple um, headphone amps. Um, oh. But they're, uh, I don't know what, some of them are like audio frequency range, some of them are, radio, are like RF. But you know, either way they're EQs and they might sound cool if we can get them. To work and then this is the uh the tape machine yeah so that's the the late model uh yeah gh24 and vic is currently how many do you are you guys restoring right now like <laughs> yeah. so I, work, I, I work with a guy randy blevins partner of late and great steve sadler yeah. who um, sourced us this console sourced this console. well yeah he helped helped get it at least with the lights on yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um but anyway Brand, randy and i um yeah, we go through MCI tape machines all the time, fixing them up, bringing them back to spec, sending the heads out, getting them checked. Yeah, this will be the next thing to go through, but as far as we know, it works great. Yeah, Steve Steve Sadler, before he passed on, uh, restored this one. And so we haven't tracked a session to it yet, just because we've been, you know, using the computer when people come in. Yeah. Um, but this particular model, because it's the late one, it's the Sony branded one, you can actually punch on these and the, the H24s are kind of known for kind of fussy yeah. punching. So. so there's like a bunch of dynamics. There's 421s and 441s, sure, 57. You know, there's like all the standard kind of stuff that you'd expect. There's like one of those things. Um, uh, D12? Uh, the original, right? D20. Oh, D20. Yeah. Nice. A pair of Josephson E22Ss. There's a bare dynamic. Uh, M160. So that's like. Is that a that's a is that a dynamic the 160? It's a little ribbon, little tiny ribbon that's great for acoustic guitar. Um, that's what we mainly use it for. It's cardioid. Ah, oh, that's right. Okay. Or hi hats. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. This is our U47. This is like a 50s U47 uh, with the original tube, the VF14M. So wow. it's actually got the original M tube in it. Wow. Uh, and that one came out of Bearsville Studios in New York by way of Chicago. The guy sold it to me and he flew down to give it to me. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what a rare, beautiful gem to have in the studio. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. We don't have any, we have two or three 48 volt um, condensers. We don't really use uh, condensers unless they have tubes in them. That's yeah. just kind of something that I like to do. Nice. Uh, there's a... A Lomo 1989, Whoa. which holds the record for the most beautiful vocal mic, because <laughs> um, it's like so Art Deco and cool looking. Yeah, that's and that's amazing. that's just a. This is my favorite mic in the whole place. Wow. This pair. So is that that's a tube condenser? Yeah, it's a Russian. It's a Russian U47. Okay. But oh, okay. I mean, honestly, we've got you know like a regulated supply on that U47 and. There's something about that Lomo that just like, it's just a killer microphone. It's really good. Um, C12A? Yeah, two of those, yeah. match pair of those oh, guys. Man, that's like, I love those mics. Those are great, yeah. And we got a pair. These are a match pair of um, M582s. 
Oh, those guys, nice. they're great. Oh, we have one of those Telefunken things. What's that called again? AR-51. It's like one of the new ones. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really cool. Sounds great. <laughs> I, I love the, uh, one of those Telefunken things. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I can't, well, I don't, I don't use it all that much. We kind of just awesome. like, and then we have, um, in terms of like vocal two mics, this locally made Mic Tech CV4, um, which is, I, I don't know why people don't think these are cooler. These are amazing. Um, and it's this guy in town that builds them, um, who's just a super genius. All the stuff that he makes is fantastic. Yeah. It sounds great. What's the name? It's called Mic Tech, is the company? Mic Tech, yeah. Um, and this is the CV4. I think this is their like kind of flagship vocal condenser. Beautiful. Yeah, they're great. There's a pair of Coles oh, 4038s, which are great. Oh, um, man. And those are the new Coles. They're, so those were like one of the only things that I bought brand new. This is the uh, RCA collection. Oh yeah. Which is 44, 77. Yeah, uh, it's actually, it's a PB90. So it's... Oh, oh yeah, it looks a little smaller. It's, yeah, it's the predecessor to the 44. And it's color, and then two SK46s. So kind of cool. Nice, dude. Oh yeah, I've got Reslos somewhere. They don't live in the same thing because these are British. Oh, are oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep them. I keep them separated by country. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, let's let's go into here because now I'm in here. I can hear how uh, tight this room sounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is the vocal booth again, like the kind of Brooklyn mentality of using every inch. I have like points on the ceiling so you can hang the vocal mic down. Oh um, yeah. I love you also that. Have this pass through thing happening here, so like when you've got the doors closed and somebody needs to run through from the uh, control room to the live room. Yep. It's nice to be able to like have your vocalist set up or your, you know, vocal and guitar set up like closer so people can still get through in the back. Yep. Um, I love but the that. whole thing is lined with uh, uh, like rigid fiberglass insulation. Yep. Um, I think it was Knopf rather than um, Owens Corning that we used in here. And then you can even tighten up the early reflection stuff a little bit more with the curtains. Ah, I love that. So when it's all closed up, like the vocalist, sorry, Vic, I'm gonna, <laughs> the vocalist can get really private in here. Yeah. Uh, and like all of our lighting is on Variax. Yes. So the vocalist can really get vibey. Yeah, yeah. And like do their thing and. That's yeah, amazing, but, man. <clears throat> so there's a couple of big bass traps in the corner and then the whole thing is just like lined with two inches of rigid fiberglass and then covered with, I don't want to be like, like thingy about stuff like this, but this is Belgian linen. <laughs> and no, no, here's the thing, right? <laughs> because I didn't, I, I, I would, this is, you're looking at like, like just in here, this yeah. is like a thousand dollars worth of this shit, right? Oh it's my like, gosh. just like ultra high end stuff. The thing that happened was I ordered this like cheap, like, like I ordered the stuff that you'd use to like make like a chicken, it's pants or something, right? Like the cheapest shit you could get. <laughs> And, um, and they didn't send it for like weeks and weeks and weeks. And I finally called them. I was like, yo, I need to make my chicken pants, right? And they wrote back. They were like, we're really sorry. We ran out of this stuff that was like 30 cents a yard or something yeah, like that. They were yeah. like, what else could work? And I was like, just, I want something brown. Yeah. And they sent through a list and there was this. And it was like, like 50 something dollars a yard. And I was oh like, gosh. I'll take some of that. And they yeah. sent through a whole spool of it. So we ended oh, up with like yeah. thousands of dollars worth of this Belgian linen. Yeah, this is so, nice, dude. Super high end. Yeah, like if you are doing a take and like things are going poorly, <laughs> you can like rub. Yeah, rub the magic wall, furry wall, right? <laughs> I don't know. It might, might help. I just love how much like lumber I see in this building. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful wood natural whatever that is this uh, is maple this maple. is all maple we ended up using like really cheap scrappy lumber for most of this from a, a place in middle tennessee that that has you know like you can go really high-end floorboards with them or you can get the cheap stuff and we ended up getting all these really cheap industrial grade floorboards and then milling down 
from the floorboards milling down all the wow. laths that we used in here all the trim everything and the same goes for this room which is 2600 square feet of maple um, covering each wall and then what's this little vent down here is that just like a proper ventilation thing or what yeah so it's it's got this like passive intake up here um oh, okay. and everything goes through uh these like dead vents so the air gets forced through from the hvac which is in the ceiling down through here and it comes out but i mean the idea was that there would be plenty of airflow but it would be almost silent and you can feel it but you can't hear yeah. it you close the doors and it's like wow yeah it, it took a lot because i'm not an hvac specialist yeah. but I designed the whole thing and built the whole thing and I feel like, because it took me two years, but I feel like at least, and I'm not, I'm not, or this is not me, you know, doing this for the sake of the video, like at least two months were spent standing, just standing. Yeah. Looking at stuff. Yeah. Trying to figure out like, what does this do? Or like, what, yeah. what am I supposed to do here? You know what I mean? Like it was just <laughs> so much head scratching and confusion. Like, yeah. How does this work? And I didn't want to screw it up because I put a lot into this place. It was yeah, like, man. Um, I can show you the the HVAC baffle boxes and how the whole thing works. It, it works really well. I'm a vocalist, so yeah. the idea was like, if someone's gonna be in here cutting a vocal, I, I actually was like, I was sitting in here one day and my kids were playing the piano and I was making something in this area with the doors closed and it was hot. And I realized how stuffy it was. I was like, this isn't gonna work. You yeah. know, we need more ventilation so we yeah. added an entire like another 18,000 BTU system just to do this booth the other booth in the library room oh my gosh so that's what's in here um these vents that are actually maybe the sound shapes these vents that are built in here that's wow. the sound that comes out of the ceiling um and then there's another one over there that's the return and that takes it back so those can like that can stay on during sessions can't hear it uh, wow. but then there's a mini split in here as well to just kind of like blast it when it's getting too hot yeah is the tracking right holy yeah. cow yeah that's one of the reasons why i keep using this on camera mic is because it's so obvious when yeah. you go from room to room yeah how different the rooms sound and like just walking from the booth in here sound it's yeah. it's amazing because it's not like this isn't like a enormous room but it sounds big it, and sounds, it sounds great yeah, yeah thanks i mean when we first did it, Vic, what's that thing that we have? An audio toolbox. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing some like waterfall diary. I was, I was trying to see what kind of um, frequency responses we're getting in here, like what kind of reflection densities were where in time and stuff. And it, def it was like, it, frequency wise, like this, this room is like super flat. Like there's not really, somehow we've managed to place everything in here so that like, all the weird low stuff is trapped and is under control and all the high stuff isn't reflected back. I think like the density of this wood helps a lot. Yeah. Um, Al and Ben's clouds that we put up in the corners up in the top, there was some like weird bass stuff that happened, especially when we started moving the drum, experimenting with the drum set in here yeah. versus in the dead room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we totally have that under control now. And, it's just perfect how it worked out because we can have the mics like a perfect distance away from oh, the ceiling with these yes. um, so that we don't get early reflections in the back of the mics. And it's just wonderful. It's surprisingly a great drum room. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that, is, that was a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really nice surprise because we, we, didn't, we didn't think it was going to sound as, as good for drums as it does. Who, who made these clouds, you said? We did. Uh, Alex... Uh, the head engineer um, did the clouds. He did all these at the ones in the control room. Um, uh, so he was he's been on helping since we started uh, basically like a few months into the project. It was just me and him and we worked together for the full two years on getting everything built. It's um, really cool. From like yeah clouds to the walls total wall assemblies, HVAC, electric. This is a, probably might seem like a silly thing, but I think is is super valuable for, especially for people at home who might not think about it, but the stands on the ceiling. Oh yeah. <laughs> is such a, like I'm all about like, get it off of the floor and out of the way. Yep. Mm -hmm. And tie lines in the ceiling too, if you're if you're building yes. something you need. Yeah, this room mic is great. Yeah. yeah. 
like you have a you have a little mic that people can talk into or you've got you know for us like being able to take cables off the floor um, yeah. for overheads just yeah. like two less cables that are on the floor tile it to the ceiling i think are one of those things that everyone should have i love how much stuff you have in here and it's not like <laughs> You look at cramped. look at all the floor space. Dude, I feel cramped. I don't know. I always, but I always kind of pack too much stuff into places. Well, still, what, what, what I think makes the room sound good and feel good, and that I think that a lot of studios miss is that, like, you can play a lot with the idea of how much of a garage this is and isn't. You yeah. Know? Like uh, this, it, this is still like you know, still have like it's still a garage shaped space. So yeah. like when I first came in here for the first time. You know, there's no way this can possibly sound good because like <laughs> yeah. there's so many like parallel surfaces and like all this weird stuff but no it sounds like a completely real yeah it's like a real space all yeah. the guitars on the walls and got the upright in the back yeah the grand out of the way and then all of this look this is yeah this is bonkers this is this is synthtopia i guess or but yeah we've got the a100 with the one for the Hammond, that's yeah. what you call that. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a Whirly, one of the early ones, I can't remember what, I think 140 or something like that. The Rhodes suitcase, which I love, yeah. the, with the solid state amp, they're really killing. That's the the Baba O'Reilly organ, the Lowry. Wow. You know, the Baba 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 That does that, which is kind of neat. That's a part piece of compact duo that needs repair. The Mellotron, um, a Multimoog, this, Radio Shack Moog, um, concert mate, Whoa. an original Korg MS-20, the Japanese one, the big guy, nice. and then there's an ARP 2600 that's being repaired at the moment, 2600C, so like a really rare ARP, um, and a Maxi Korg as well that's coming back soon that just got repaired. Um, oh my gosh. The Ream key bass, which is yep. super cool, that sounds great. Um, and we actually have a, another ream combo organ that we don't have out at the moment that has another one of those in the bass section and guitar pedal land yeah lots of pedals to play with including like yeah this the diarmond oil can tremolo which is kind of neat and some old mutron stuff so what got you into getting all these keyboards you know what it really comes down to like i'm a, I'm a singer songwriter so i'm not i'm not all that great at any of these instruments but I like being able to offer people the chance to get really creative, yeah. get into the weeds. Yeah. Know? And some of these instruments are just things that people hadn't seen before. Yeah. So it's inspiring to yep. people, even if they've kind of played with everything. Yep. To get back into like feeling like a little kid. Yeah, um, man. And that's what these were designed to do. The whole space was designed to kind of like help people experience that again because it, it yeah. is something that I think we lose. That's it's cool, easy man. to forget to be playful. So these are just designed to encourage playfulness. Yeah. That's it. I mean, if my kids come out here, they don't they don't look at, at any of this stuff and, and ask, you know, to see the user manual. Right. <laughs> they, they, do, they do this. Yeah. Know, and like, and like, they start pushing stuff and then they hear something they like and then they stop. Yep. And then they play with that for a while. And like, that to me is how, you know, like there's a basic level of competency that someone has to have, yeah. you know, control of the instrument to know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, like if I play all the white keys and C type of thing, like if they understand that much and they can yeah. make sound, I think that's basically what what people need to be able to do. And that these are just tools to become more excited about stuff. Yeah. Do you also play drums? Yeah, the drums are my first instrument. Um, yeah. So we've got the little kit that I, play quite a bit. Uh, that's my favorite little kit. Then we got a few snares over there uh, on top of the EMT. Um, oh yeah, that was nice. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> where that lives. The, uh, the EMT plate the sitting plate. in the corner. Yeah. Um, the snare shelf. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we use it for at the moment. Um, oh, that's so cool. And then we've got, I don't know, some other kind of weird and wonderful keyboards. We've got this for Fisa thing. This guy's kind of oh, neat. It's like a little... <laughs> it's got like a motor Fire in alarm. It. <laughs> oh, sick, yeah. It's got this little knee lever. <laughs> that 
That is so cool. I was sitting outside one day and I grabbed it. What kind of what kind of piano is that? It's a 1929 Mason Hamlet uh, Double A. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's a world record holder as the heaviest grand piano ever made. And I don't mean heavy in like the jazz world. Oh, okay. But it's heavy too, in that kind of way. <laughs> it's a really nice sounding piano. I really like it. It's like 900 and something pounds. Uh, Holy cow. Wait, what's a ton? Is a ton 2,000 pounds? So it's almost half a ton. And then we have a tack piano as well over there in the corner. Oh, um, cool. Did you tack it or did it come like that? I bought it from our piano tech. Uh, like that he used to take this to gigs and he was like i was like do you want to sell that thing because it doesn't look like something that you really want to like gig with much yeah and he was like yeah i'm ready to get rid of it so we bought it from him i don't play the keys oh so, my goodness but that's kind of the <laughs> that is so cool yeah it's fun I have my, my like stage guitar is a 1959 jazz master and that lives inside nice. the house. Um, but there's still like this Jaguar is a 62 and that's, that's a great guitar. It's one of my favorites and one of those ones that people really tend to gravitate towards. Um, there's a 64 Epiphone Texan right here, uh, wow. a 66 Epiphone Texan, one of those Harmony jobbies. Um, Another Harmony uh, Sovereign acoustic guitar, the, uh, the Led Zeppelin wow. guitar that they track all their stuff with. It's got like out of tune dead strings. Uh, nice. Yeah, those are pretty cool. This is really like a, a museum of excellent just toys and yeah, fun, but also like not toys. <laughs> <laughs> toys, toys, yeah, toys for music making. I mean, I, I, every cent I've ever made, I've spent on musical instruments. Just what I've enjoyed. What's that guy down there? The little that's one. A, uh, a, a that's a little Fender Champ. Uh, Champ, that's right. From like 52. That's oh yeah. Probably the best sounding yep in here. Uh, oh, I love those. Yeah, that's all original. Like, sounds incredible. Then there's the Basement 50, which is a kind of a incredible. wild story. I could, Show you the back of it later. There's a B15N. I love these bass amps, man. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, there's this little silver tone. That's I call it the scary amp because when you go to turn it off. Oh there yeah, it yeah. Whoa. That's scary. It's a scary sound. There's an Evo. Oh, Del Rio. That's what it's called. The Roland. What's your doodle? Chorus JC120. That's right. So, um, so what what are you what are your sort of like favorites to use when you're making a record? I I, I that champ is the greatest sounding rock and roll machine I've ever heard. Oh, like cool. you can't you can't get a bad sound out of it. Yeah. I really like this Gibson, the Discoverer. I I always like I'd listen to these old records where there'd be like a really like a super trebly kind of guitar tone. Yeah. You know, like a telly, but like a telly would like with really sharp teeth, yeah. you know, that kind of sound. And yeah. uh, Vic was actually helping me to repair this thing at one point, and he was like, oh, cut this one cap. And I cut it, and it was the one that takes out all the high frequencies. Uh -huh. um, and, and like, I turned it on, and it worked. And I was like, man, that's the sound that I've been trying to get out of every amp that I ever had. Like, how did you do that? Yeah. It's like the range master kind of thing. And it was this, what is it, what's the cap so Oh, it's the ice pick cap. Yeah. It's a cap that goes across the output, the plates on the power tubes. Oh. And it was shorting out. And so, like, the output tubes, the way push-pull amps work is they're out of phase. So that cap lets high frequencies, it, high frequencies go through the cap and then cancel out. Oh, and okay. The low frequencies stay in. So it was shorting, which was causing no uh, output. And then I told Ben to cut it. <laughs> and then it's like, you get your output back, but then you still have, like, a lot of, like, eight, you know, I don't know, 12... 15k wow but it sounds <laughs> so cool painful to listen to yeah but if you record it well it sounds incredible cable hooks yeah very cool that had to, that that was a beam that had to be there for the structure to not collapse yeah so we 
we put maple around it just like the rest of everything and then we put these i made this jig to put these knobby jobs in because we were like how are we going to use this and i decided that it should be a tree yeah and now it's a tree that holds cables because it looks kind of like a tree that's stuff that people that you don't want to think about like oh where are we going to put the cables right. like when you're coming up with the grand plan for the studio that's the lat that's like you're in the studio and you're like oh where do we put the cables right you know? yeah, yeah but it's it's such a crucial part of the every single day experience in the studio yeah yeah and it's like if they need to be somewhere where they're out of the way and easily accessible at the same time and that that really worked because we don't we didn't want bunch against this wall this is kind of like there is this nod to the memphis studios with the slap wall oh, so cool. we left this completely exposed there's no it's just 12 inches of concrete yeah. between us and the street we left it open uh hoping that we wouldn't have any issues with sound coming in or going out yeah it didn't it compromised our kind of integrity in here so we left it that was yeah so that seemed like a logical place for all that stuff to go man this is really really amazing and then you have a, a pass-through door i think it can take you through <laughs> that door so all those doors we made custom made uh, holy cow they're like 700 pounds with three quarter inch glass on one side and half inch glass on the other side that glass is literally three quarters of an inch thick oh my and gosh yeah. wow and then this one we did like a this is all rock wool in here yeah <clears throat> so it's a totally different sounding room if it oh this is like a um, door yeah like th this room sounds even different to the uh the vocal booth yeah uh, and really look, I can't, I can't get enough of these stands on the ceiling. This is so cool. Yeah. Where did you get, I don't know if you would remember this, but where did you get these? I, these are, you can, they were on Amazon. I can't remember what they were called, but they're like on stage stands or something like that. So they're, wow. they're really, they're like three bucks a piece and they're oh. hugely valuable. Okay. I'm going to find them and link those in the description for the rest of the world because <laughs> We need more of those. Yeah. Well, they're if you have them on on like uh, these guys that you know kind of swivel wow, around rather yeah. than just this is the one that is harder to use. Fixed. Yeah. But this guy, like, you can move it wherever you want. You can put overheads. You can put a vocal mic. It's like, yeah, they're great. That's um, awesome. I yeah, that's definitely need to get one of those. Yeah. This is one we did in oak, so this is all like oak boards and oak uh, around. Same kind of linen and rock wool. For a little bit more kind of dead feeling. This is a room that we found double bass really works well. Yeah. I, I, it's nice that you used the wood so much in the in the design because hanging stuff from this from like drywall yeah. or like any other material doesn't work yeah. very well. <laughs> yeah, well and for stuff like this, like knowing where our studs were. We yep. could actually, you know, make sure that everything was secure in there, um, this which is, is good. Cool. And so you guys made all made the doors? Yeah, yeah. Alex and I made the doors. Um, Had you guys made doors before? No, yeah, that Whoa. was like the first time we'd done that. That's inspirational. I wouldn't wouldn't do it again if I could avoid it. Yeah, I mean, like I've I've bought a pre-hung door. Yeah. And just hanging a pre-hung door was such a nightmare i can't even imagine building one and then hanging it it was horrible i mean and actually the worst part was the closers the closers took me days to get right like you'd close them and they'd close like a little too much yep then they wouldn't close enough and then they'd like kind of do it and then they you know i mean the closers were a nightmare were yeah awesome. but yeah these work great i mean they're they're very effective at stopping sound uh, man that's incredible and they close with that super nice thud could you show me the the door at the entrance because that one looked like a bank vault that is a bank vault yeah that's that's the um that's the serious door yeah look at this thing all right so this is because there's so much you know stuff in there yeah this is like it's got it's got things what do you call these guys like at yeah. the top as well it's got the little jobbies at the top um and here and here and here so it's like two five six seven eight nine deadbolts yeah it'd be hard to get in yeah the idea and then if you 
tried to get in any other way through the walls or whatever to be even harder so wow there's a lot of security to keep this place and then you uh, have two doors up. so obviously this is it's a pretty soundproof oh yeah whole you can, thing you can hear the street noise but we're right behind like there are truck there's you know train whistles and there's trucks yeah. all the time and you'd never you can't hear anything that's so cool uh, we've been tracking and you're very late yeah the night outside there's no spill hey wait wait did you guys make this door no i bought this door this is like a prefab security door wow you get that like from like the fbi or yeah um <laughs> i can send you a link so you can okay. link in the description because it wasn't that expensive it was like i, I think i, I want to say like 600 bucks oh, or something wow. like that but very good investment though well it's yeah that's probably 20 minutes for somebody to get through you know yeah. that's 20 minutes longer for yeah man the police to get here or whatever if anything happens so that's incredible um and then that's just basically a sound door uh, so if we have sirens going we can like yeah <laughs> perfect test yeah that's just one of the doors and if we close this one wow now that you guys have finished this place right before the uh, pandemic hit what is the sort of the long-term vision the idea at first was just to make records here indefinitely but with everything kind of shifting a bit there's a building that i've bought um in upstate new york that's huge it's like ten thousand square feet wow um, and it's got a few different kind of components to it so i think we're gonna move operations up there i've also got a you know, big console that I'm buying and, and kind of doing, this was like proof of concept for me. Yeah. Um, can we make something incredible out of something that's kind of janky? Yeah. Um, and it worked and made great records and that's cool, but yeah, something bigger and better uh, is next. And this will be something that we find someone that really understands the vision of it to take yeah. care of it and, and do their thing. Yeah, but like I, I just I, I want whoever comes here to like I mean I poured my my blood sweat and tears into this building I yeah. thought about it for years what I wanted to do so the next person who comes here has to like has to really want to do something cool I want to find a good owner who's gonna respect it yeah and I want this place to make records like I want yeah. to move away from here and in five years look up what's been done here and see yeah. a bunch of really cool stuff yeah that's that's what i want i don't, I don't want to pass it on to somebody who doesn't want to take it seriously awesome man well well thank you guys for having me out here man, and thank uh, you so much for coming and checking it out letting me uh let me peep it out and geek out on some of your stuff here and um yeah for anyone who's interested i will uh i'll link all the relevant information down below to follow these guys and check out the studio. Is there a studio Instagram or anything yeah. like that? Yeah, we're at uh, Carriage Works. Uh, hold on, can you ask that again in a second? <laughs> <laughs> Carriage Works Records. All right. Yeah, you can. Where that's where we are, and I think and there's a website too. But I'll have to get that to you as well because I don't know it off the top of my head. It's either Carriage Works Records or Carriage Works Recording or something like that. Cool, man. Well, thank you, thank you again, and uh, I will you. get out of your guys' hair. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so Thank much, you. man. All right.